Well, the overall scores after four legs completed, and there is one point that separates first to third. Team Holson PRB's lead has all but vanished once they had to retire from the last leg. But they're still ahead, if only just, while 11th Hour Racing Team and Team Militia are sitting just off the lead. And the import race series really coming into play as second and third share 18 points. And the tie break going the way of the American team because of this series here. 11th hour racing team with those strong performances in Alicante, in Cape Town and in Idijai means that Charlie Enright's team is sitting in first place on 13 points. Team Militia in second, BO Term in third with Team Holson PRB in fourth and Guya Environment Team Europe in um, So we've got the start right off Fort Adams. The boats will head off towards the harbour entrance, round the Castle Hill gate, and then they go back into the harbour through the start line gate, round Mark II, which is in the harbour, then towards the bridge, through the bridge, there's a gate to go through the bridge, round Mark III to port, back out through the bridge gate, around through the start line gate, and then heading off back out of the harbour for a final pass through the Castle Hill gate and the spectators on the point, and then out offshore around the Brenton Reef buoy, and then they'll be heading free out into the Atlantic to head towards Aarhus. They started ahead, they pushed ahead, they got the speed advantage, and they are going to start very clean here. Surely this is the home advantage. This is knowing what those currents are going to do. And Charlie Enright starts the import race in Newport and the departure of leg five in first place with a very healthy three boat length lead. Unfortunately, Sam, you said you shouldn't say anything, but it's true. BO Term are at the other end of the field at the moment. Yeah, they've got a bit of work cut out, but again, I, I tr I'm confident they'll be able to catch up. Well, we'll have to see. At the moment, we are now seeing the predictable procession starting to form. And this is great view here if uh, Charlie Enright wanted to look behind oh, look, look, because there's nice a fight going match. on here. Yeah, Team Holson PRB are pushing Team Militia high. They are saying that uh, Boris Herman has no right to go in there. Abby Ela on the bow. She was pretty clear, pretty vocal as to what she thought about Team Militia. I mean, Team Militia had the speed there. I'm not sure whether Team Holson PRB, while they had the right to close out the German team, whether they would have been able to. But either way, Team Militia are through. We have umpires on. So might have to struggle to soak back down towards the gate, um, towards the end of the leg, and that might let Holson PRB catch up a little bit. So. Maybe they'll bunch up again at the at this gate. Huge differences in speed here, isn't it? Huge differences stretching the boat out. But what an incredible start for 11th Hour Racing Team as leg five here in Newport gets underway. Good breeze now for Bio Term and Francesca. You, you were seeing this difference in heel here, the difference in breeze um, when you're in the lead. A round turn. We can see uh, 11th hour coming towards the mark now. And it looks it, like they've chosen to tack around and not jibe around uh, this gate. So there's obviously some tactical choices uh, being made here. And maybe Frankie can explain there why they know which way. Um, potentially, I think the. Yeah, potentially the breeze will come more from the northwest, west northwest. So if if you're staying coming back on the higher side of the course, uh, you will get the breeze first and uh, try to avoid also split with the fleet. It's always quite dangerous if you make a decision that is quite different compared to the other boat. The, the race is still really close, so I think it's the safest uh, option in this moment and. Uh, potentially also a little bit of uh, less current uh, staying the, close to the side of the of the land so I, I think everybody's following them and that's not not a bad option I think one of the other things as well is that the breeze has been slowly ticking to the right-hand side as well. So it probably makes sense to try and hold on to that left-hand side as we look at it now. But again, 
the team that is deciding to make those different decisions. They've chosen a different decision with their head sail configuration, and Team Holtz and PRB double down again with their tactics as well. They have decided to jive. It's going to be the maneuver that keeps their momentum going a little bit a little bit better. Abby Ela on the front. No need to winch that furl in. Abby will just simply use her strength. Foils, uh, furls that head sail in. Now it comes out on the new side. They need to get underway quickly because this is where we did see the uh, the lighter breeze. So a jibe for Team Holson PRB. Uh, Bioterm just going out of shot off to windward. And it does look like Bioterm have lost a little bit of ground there. Maybe uh, a weak attack at the top these maneuvers always adding and losing boat lengths here well, a lot of work and it's going to be crucial at this moment here because team militia and 11th hour racing team are now rounding that next mark it should be a turn to the left but 11th hour racing team have left an enormous gap the shift forced them to come lower and team militia somehow managed to keep tighter to the wind but still keep the speed uh, with them now they turn around harden up onto the breeze and if it hadn't happened before it's happening now the wind is now coming into team militia's sails first and 11th hour racing team are getting the dregs sam that's a disappointment for 11th hour racing team but very shrewd sailing from jan ellis and the crew on team militia yeah, I think they've, they took advantage of uh, all the... Well, they've managed to read the wind the best. Um, sometimes it's easier attacking from behind in these situations because the lead boat kind of shows you where not to go. Um, and uh, But, it, yeah, it's so... It's Bioterm tacked to follow the line of Team Militia and 11th Hour Racing Team. And the jibe for Kevin Escoffier, maybe that made the difference. Maybe it was just the pure sailing. These two boats have traded windward position to leeward. But Kevin Escoffier now slipping up into third place. And that's a good way to start building that confidence and start staying in touch with those boats ahead. Remember, on the overall scoreboard, everything is unbelievably tough. The, the sail, like, hand steer. So that's why we have a really big uh, and powerful pilot for most of the time. But, yeah, it's pretty awesome to sail with him. And, um, of course, he's in his hometown, so... It's, I think you can feel quite a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A lot of the fans out in the water today are expecting 11th hour racing team to perform well. We kind of take it to the nth level as we go on board now with Militia, and it looks like they're setting up for a maneuver. Synchronized tacking. Synchronized tacking, a very tight battle. Look at that, the furl almost happening precisely at the same time. I'm not actually sure which of the teams decided to lead that tack, who was attacking, who was defending, or whether it was just one of those lovely moments in sailboat racing where you decide to tack and you look up and you think, oh, they're doing it. Uh, from, from the water. <laughs> so that's what the smile was, the secrets out of the bag now. Well, the two, two boats, the leading boats, first and second team, Militia and 11th hour racing team, are now under the bridge with plenty of clearance there. Every time that the ocean racers come to Newport, the bridge provides such an amazing spectacle as we're racing around Narragansett Bay. If anything's going to make Animoca seem small on the water, it's something like this. But right now, though, it's all about this race and Difficult to call here, as Tom, I was saying, Sam, there's not much between these two boats, but light winds, tricky conditions, the windward position surely is the safer bet. Team Militia with 11th hour racing team further down off the ley line. Team Mil uh, Militia about to tack and round, just holding themselves clear, keeping the speed, that little bear away, just building a bit of momentum before the tack, furling half at least of the J0 in, taking the boat through the breeze, and then the sail comes back out and back onto the power. And the boat lengths are starting to build in favor of this boat here as Jan Ellis quickly runs from one side to the other, just making sure that he's given enough room between him and the mark. And looking at the way they've exited, they were pretty close to that mark there with the outrigger, the foil as well. If anything, I'd almost say that there's a little bit of They're in the breeze now. Paul Mayer can breathe a sigh of relief. They uh, at least are round, and the distance here between these boats is only stretching as the wind gets very fickle in indeed.
occupied and the instruments always seem to say completely useless numbers and it's impossible to understand what's going on um, and I just remember there's no point even questioning calibration in this area because <laughs> it's really 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 hard to use your instruments for performance compared to what you're used to don't know if you it's know. a really interesting observation there Sam and I, 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 the, the course has been changed the new bearing to the new bearing has distance 0.2 nautical miles. I repeat, the sea flag is displayed at the start boat. The course has been changed. The new bearing to the leaving gate is... The clock has pretty much run out for 11th hour racing team. It's certainly in Team Militia's favour. The patience of Jan Ellis and the cool-headed decision to keep the bow down and just keeping the boat creep has paid off. It's certain now the five points for the import race in Newport is with the German team. Jan Ellis keeping that boat sailing well. I think on the, when we go out of the channel, on the right side is more breeze than on the left side. But it looks dead flat. And where is the finishing line? The finishing line is just this guy. <laughs> just this mark. So we are almost there. Still, so we're almost there, yeah. Oh, there we go. Uh, Team Militia across that finish line. We just heard Rosalind Kuiper on board there, just giving the onboard reporter a little bit of an update. That's the gate between those two white marks. And I, you, you can't you can't discredit 11th hour racing team for their tactics here, Sam. They, they had to do something and they had to try something, but that is for Team Militia, an extra point in the import series. And the import series is it's going to be crucial. Yeah, it's crucial, but I think, uh, as you said, you can't disgrace 11th hour's performance. It's been a great race, those two boats yes, so close, and they've done everything they could. So uh, I think uh, Newport should be proud of Charlie and his team. And look at the breeze now in Team Militia's sail. I mean, Jan Ellis has been able to fill it now. It's going to be two jibes for 11th Hour Racing Team to get through the scoring gate. Uh, Team Militia kept the bow down, kept the boat just drifting forward, and that has got them into the new breeze. Charlie Enright deciding to put the... Yeah, now it's a new chapter. Yes, Nothing. now out of this, but uh, we see if we can find a little bit of wind here in front. I think so. And what about the points for the import race, you're happy? I, I don't know, I... Uh, yeah, it's done. Yeah, are we yes. one step ahead? Yes. Well, the import, this one we won, and the overall uh, ranking, I don't know. Uh, maybe we, you can ask to the... Yeah, we ask to the... To the viewer. To the viewers, what is the consequence of this? Are we now second overall, or still third? <laughs> you tell us. Slightly, I mean, Sam, it's always a bit of an advantage, isn't it, when you're trying to catch the two ahead of you, and they're kind of locked into a personal battle. Yeah, they're, they're locked into a bit of a battle and also they're showing, they're showing you where not to go quite often. If they, they sail into a light patch, um, you're watching their boat speed on your AIS screen. So just like we can see the boat speeds with the virtual eye, uh, they can see that too. So uh, there'll be someone looking on the computer, uh, maybe it'll be Charles Cordelier, uh, inside the boat and uh, reporting that back to uh, work out where to go and where not to go. Our team hosts and PRB are now through. Uh, they will be using those boats ahead. They will be using everything they can because they have an opportunity here to try and close up. Ahead of them is 11th Hour Racing Team and ahead of them is Team Militia. And uh, we'll, we can hear the reactions from Team Militia of what had proved to be a very eventful departure from doing quite nicely on the water right now as all the teams are struggling to leave the bay here in Newport as we get leg five underway. Well, the current standings from the departure with Team Militia in first place, 11th hour racing team in that tight battle, but ultimately just losing out in second. Team Holson PRB in third place, Bio Term in fourth. On Guyo Environment, Team Europe unable to take to the water today, scoring zero points for the import race series. The maximum five going to the Germans. So what does that do for the import race overall standings? Well, it closes things up at the top as well as move Team Hulse and PRB up into third place. 11th hour racing team still in the lead with Team Militia in second. The Swiss team up into third, pushing Bioterm down into fourth place only by one point for the moment.